Hello YouTube, it's Luna and welcome back to my channel. I reckon I can guess what you're thinking. We're in the middle of the mildest November, probably since records began, and I'm doing a winter wardrobe video. Well yeah, it's mild today, but you know the vagaries of the English weather, it might be minus three tomorrow, and I think it's always good to be prepared. In this video I hope to give you a few ideas of how you can keep warm without compromising your gothic style. Let's start with the obvious, layer up. Yeah, I know you know this, but it's better that you wear three thin layers rather than one thick one. It's all physics, it's to do with air pockets and stuff. I don't really get it, but I do know that it works. Another obvious thing is to put on the thick tights. Primark do some great ones that are all fleecy and they're not hideously expensive. And you can always put on your ripped up coloured fishnets over the top to keep it goth. Now I'm going to sound a bit like your grandmother now. Never underestimate the power of a petticoat. You'd be amazed at what a difference that little slip of nylon can make when you put it between your legs and your skirt. It's that air pockets thing again. Be prepared to spend a reasonable amount of money to get a decent one. You want one that will allow your body to breathe so you don't get sweaty and horrible. You also need it to be anti-static so it doesn't cling to everything. Actually, the best petticoat would be an old-fashioned cotton one with the little lacy bits around the bottom. You could probably pick them up in vintage stores or if you're lucky in a charity shop. They usually be white, but you can always chuck them in the washing machine with a tub of dye. I think it'll look quite nice, a bit of coloured lace peeping out of the bottom of your skirt. If you really can't bear the thought of wearing a petticoat, then do what I've done today, which is simply to put one skirt on over the top of another one. So to change that up a little bit, simply take a pin, grab a lump of skirt, oik it up, and then pin where you've grabbed somewhere up near your waistband, like so. This will create a cascade effect. There you go. Another way to achieve the cascade is to get a bit of ribbon or cord. I've used a contrast colour here so that you can see it. Put it down behind the waistband, gather your skirt into it, tie it up in a reef knot, and then simply let it fall. There you are. Here I'm using a scarf clip to create the cascade. First of all, I'm putting the hem of the skirt through the clip and pulling it basically as far as it will comfortably go and then secure the clip down. So you get a little bit of bling at the bottom of your skirt. And here I'm putting the clip about halfway up the skirt, just to give a, a slightly different look. A cascade from the middle of the skirt and a little bit of bling. Another alternative is one of those high-low skirts. You know the one I mean. Oh, hello Zinni. This is a soft cotton jersey wrap-over one. I wouldn't normally wear one of these because they're not long enough for me. But as an overskirt, I think it looks quite nice. And I've just realised how rubbish my webcam is. I do apologise. Don't feel that because it's winter, you have to forego your lovely summer floats. No, no. You just have to change what you put on underneath them. My summer and winter wardrobes are practically identical. It's just in winter, I wear more of it. Don't be afraid of thermals. Yes, again, I know I sound like your granny, but thermals have come a long way from the old Daymart flowery things of yore. This is a long sleeve thermal t-shirt from Primark. It's actually a man's one because I prefer the neckline. The fabric itself is really quite thin, but it really does make a difference on a cold winter's day. If you can afford it, go for silk. This is a silk t-shirt. I'm not so keen on the neckline for this one so I generally wear this under something that's got a higher neck. I like my 
rounder necks coming up higher. But for warmth, silk can't be beaten. I'd also say if you can, invest in a pair of silk gloves. I swear by these, when I'm on the motorbike in winter, I put these on under my leather gauntlets. They, again, such a thin layer and it really makes a heck of a difference. Now I'm very sorry if I'm offending anybody, but whilst I'm extremely fond of shrugs, I really don't like cardigans. I think they're frumpy and unflattering. That is until very recently when I discovered the waterfall cardigan, also known as the cascade cardigan. These usually have a big floaty frilly bit down the front um, and often there is an asymmetric hem points at the bottom at the front and sometimes around at the sides as well. This one is cotton jersey with a lace back. I bought this to wear with an Assassin's Creed Sons of Anarchy crossover cosplay outfit but I thought it looked so nice that I've now added, added it to my staple wardrobe. This one I picked up at a stall at a folk festival not that long ago. It's knitted cotton. It has a frill all the way down the front, lots of pointy bits around the bottom as you can see and it also has a frill round the cuff. And it's made in Brighton. Thank you for watching this video. Um, just to let you know, my outfit today is my favourite Florence and Fred floaty skirt. I am wearing my cotton cardi. I generally tend to pin these at the waist and then add one of my myriad wide belts to accentuate my waistline. If you have any comments or questions, please leave them below. Please remember to like, share and subscribe and until the next time, take care. Bye.